And this is pounds. Is that the answer? I'm pretty sure. Sweet. I'm 90% <coughs> confident. Yes? What if the right in and the right out were different? If the right in and the right out are different, then we would have a time left, yeah. which would leave some kind of time here. And when you put it over here, you still could do an integrating factor. You would just do a U sub. That make sense? I just wanted to do this one because a lot of people freak out because they're like, the T's gone. This can't be right. There's no time in my equation. It's okay. Just integrate. It'll come back. Can we do an example of that? Uh, maybe at the end. I want to make sure we do an example of every type of like generic problem. Uh, yeah, Nick, what was your question? Same question? Maybe at the end. Okay, next we're going to do, I'm going to do a money problem. They're really easy if you have my equation. Okay, so your teachers may not like me for showing you this equation because I just made your calculus problem an algebra problem. But since they didn't give you the pro they didn't give you the formula sheet, and it's not even on the formula sheet if they did, like the, the equation to use the calculus on, I see no problem in showing you the easy way and have you memorize if you're gonna have to memorize a formula, you might as well memorize a formula that's useful. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> Okay, this is the formula. I'm just going to write down random stuff. Who wants to be in the problem? Rachel, right? Rachel, you're in the problem. Rachel. Rachel's, is this how you spell your name? Yep. Rachel's grandpa, gra grandfather, not grandpa. <laughs> grandfather. <laughs> invested. Uh, give me a number, 1 to 15. Seven. Seven. Seven it is. Seven thousand dollars into a trust fund. When Rachel was born. Your name is going to be Um, if he continues. I'm sorry, I didn't make it words. Invested seven thousand dollars into thank you. Seven thousand. I'm doing really good, I'm sorry. Rachel's grandfather invested seven thousand into a trust fund when Rachel was born. Okay, I think that's a whole sentence. <laughs> <laughs> um made yearly deposits. <laughs> Of got it. Twenty-five. Uh, let's just do something simple. Your fifty dollars. Um. And the interest rate. Interest rate is four percent. Find how much is in the account when Rachel turns 18. My hand is turning black. Okay, I hope that this is coherent. Rachel's grandfather invested $7,000 into a trust fund when Rachel was born. If he made yearly deposits of $250 and the interest rate is 4%, find how much is in the account when Rachel turns 18. Okay, if you see anything on the test that's about money, it's compounded continuously and you just use this formula. Is that okay? So far, so good? Okay, so first we need to have a, D, R, P, and T. We're looking for A because we want to know how much is in the account after a given time. Then we have $7,000 is how much he invested initially. So that's my principal. He's depositing $250 a year. It's at an interest rate of 4, so 0.04. And the time is 18 years. I'm assuming she turns 18, 18 years after she's born, right? <laughs> Follow me on that. You'd be surprised how many people plug in 19 or 17 instead. It's 18. Simple enough? Now I'm just going to write down what you're supposed to do. I really am 18. Hey, 
Like, did your grandfather do all of this? I wish. <laughs> that would have been so rich. I don't think many people can afford to do this kind of thing. Maybe non-Mormons because they don't have as many kids. <laughs> Okay, and I'm just going to check this in my calculator. Isn't it so easy? Didn't they do this like long, complicated, scary formula that made you think I hate life? And now you like life. <laughs> Excellent. Beautiful. Okay, guys, we're going to talk about one more case on this. Focus. Focus. Okay. So what if they don't tell, what if we want to earn a certain amount and we want to figure out how much we have to deposit? Okay. You, you can plug it all in and you can solve for D algebraically. I'm going to tell you in the cheating way. Let's say I want my A to be... Um, 100,000. Let's say it's the same problem, but I don't know what my D is, and they give me choices. Like, you know, they're going to give me a bunch of choices. You just plug in your choices to this equation, <laughs> and whichever one comes out closest to 100,000 is the right one. It's so much easier than doing the algebra. <laughs> don't tell me not, I told you. He'll get very mad. He doesn't like that I showed you this equation anyway. But it's the same equation. I derived it. So, wait a minute. He brought it up. Repeat that again. <laughs> plug, the plug the answer into the problem. Into the the answer okay. is on the test. Okay. <laughs> I've never oh, seen okay. none of the above Sorry. be the answer, right? Okay, got it. So, one of the answers, you just plug it in for your D's. <laughs> Make sense? Same thing with okay. it. Okay. Uh, I think it's like number 38 or number 39 on the practice test from the math lab. You can do that. Good practice. It's pretty simple. Okay, we need to, okay, we did those ones. Okay, those are the hardest two, so I'm happy that we did salt and money. I would now like to spend a little bit of time on some, telling the different, no. I want to do lambda or Lagrange. I don't want to do separable. You know what, I'm just going to go. So telling you what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do it. Find the equation of the plane with the following intercepts. X equals 2, Y equals 3, Z equals 4. Okay, I'm going to just tell you what to do. There will be one like this on the test. They don't always ask you to write the equation, but sometimes they'll give you the equation and they'll ask you to find the intercepts. Either way, if you know how to do this, you will get the right answer. Okay, everyone, is everyone paying attention? This is a gimme, five points. Please get the five points. Okay, you just say x over the x-intercept, y over the y-intercept, z over the z-intercept, and it equals one. x over the x-intercept, y over the y-intercept, z over the z-intercept equals one. X over the X intercept, Y over the Y intercept, Z over the Z intercept equals one. <laughs> equals one. Okay, you know, I know it's kind of annoying that I say it so many times, but they've done a lot of studies, and if you say something seven times, you're supposed to remember it. I only did like three. I figure you can handle the rest. <laughs> you don't like my Z? I think it looks very good. I think it looks good. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's good. <laughs> 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 okay, now, it's not, they're not going to write it like this. They don't write fractions because the program that they write this stuff in, it's hard to do fractions. So they're just going to multiply by a common denominator, which is 12. So I would have 6x plus 4y plus 3z equals 12. Okay, now let's say they gave me this equation instead of asking me, the, you know, instead of giving me the intercepts, they give me an equation and they want me to find the intercepts. What do I do? Divide by, Divide by 12 and read off whatever the bottom is. Wow. Easy enough? Okay, let's say you can't remember that. Just plug in zero for everything but what you're looking for. What would x be? 
You follow that too? Yeah. What's Y? What's Z? <coughs> give me points, right? They're giving me points. Okay? That's the only question they're going to ask you from 9.1. They're not going to make you identify like uh, hyperboloids, um, ellipses, all those kinds of things. This is what they're going to ask you. Okay? Great, right? Okay, let's.